All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? How's it going, Jared? It's going really well. Love it when you when you sing to me. It's my yeah. favorite. Serenade. Yeah. Well, we're getting into kind of a new segment here. Um, we do a lot of athlete of the week interviews. And if you want to be an athlete of the week, um, reach out to us. Uh, but we also want to fit in some other things. So um, not that long ago, I reached out in the Facebook group and on anyone subscribed to our newsletter, Five Line Friday. And I was just asking, you know, what are the most common problems you face as a garage gym athlete? And I mean, we got a lot of responses. I think I have over a hundred problems sitting here on my computer that we will be covering and, and you will we'll go back and forth. We're not ending athlete of the week by, by any stretch. We still have a lot of people scheduled and we'll still be publishing those, but we also want to hop into this as uh, useful, helpful content for garage gym athletes. Um, what did you want to call it? The garage gripes because garage just, gripes because the alliteration uh, just sells well. It does. It rolls yeah. off the tongue. But I'm just going to call it the garage gym athlete problem solver. And then the people can vote like which one just rolls right off the tongue. tongue. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So we'll go over some of the most common problems. You hear them a lot too. When we talk to our athletes, well, I, you know, I ask them a lot of times like struggles or problems they face in in training as a garage gym athlete, if they haven't been doing it for very long. Uh, But you know, we'll take our collective experience, things that we've actually done, but also things we've heard from the community Uh, over the years and kind of uh, consolidate it for listeners. And and the first problem we're going to tackle here is, is weather. And I think that is, it's a pretty big one for garage gym athletes because very few garage gym athletes are working out in a climate controlled space. And so I do consider you a garage gym athlete. If you're working out in the basement or a shed or an extra room, you're still a garage gym athlete in my book, but if you're in the basement area, or if you are in that extra room in your house, you don't have as much of a weather problem as like a detached garage or a garage, uninsulated garage, something like that. And weather is going to be a factor, a significant factor. Um, cold for all of our Northern friends for the most part. And then heat. Uh, I know I have a lot of experience in that one. And, and so do you now, um, <laughs> with where yeah. you're at. So, so we can talk about it. Um, but let's, let's jump into it. Weather stuff. Uh, do you want to start hot or cold Joe? Uh, hot because summer is just ending and we're going to go into cold and by solve the problem that is weather. What he means is we actually developed a weather controlling device and we can actually control the weather. Uh, it will cost you about $15,000 to install it into your garage. And it just controls the bubble. It's like a snow globe, but just, just for your garage. Just for your and house. then $15,000 per year because yeah. such an amazing <laughs> technology. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's it. You really just go to garagemathlete.com slash weather buy that. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> we got to make a page now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll start with the heat. What tips do you have for athletes training in the heat? Cause I know, It's hard. It it can be a very hard transition. And and these are things that I want to talk about, but it is a tough transition. If you are accustomed to, let's just say a air conditioned gym, anything above 65, 70 degrees is going to feel super uncomfortable when you first start working out any more, uh, a hotter space. So, uh, do you have any tips for people? Curbing your expectations. Um, this is when you have to focus on the intense, the proper intensity and that level of effort versus output. So like you might have your run times over the winter and the spring, and then the temperature raises 20 degrees, it's 90 plus. And so, and so, and your run times, especially zone two are uh, a minute slower. You have to realize that the intensity you have to keep at is the same versus the pacing. Or if you're doing a of practice and you normally get a certain amount of rounds, Well, you shouldn't aim for the same amount of rounds. You just aim for the certain amount of intensity and keeping that intensity is still going to get you where you need to be. Uh, but you're, you're not going to have the same amount of pacing reps, whatever, and strength sessions now become semi zone two cardio. (laughs) That's what I learned doing my strength sessions in, you know, hundred plus 110 plus degrees here is just lifting. And I in majority in zone two, sometimes even go up into three because the heart rate just doesn't go down. So knowing how that is going to work and 
Uh, the last least one things that I was doing as well, just, you know, not as much on strength days, but if there was anything that even remotely got my heart rate up even more when it was already that hot, uh, I wouldn't work out fasted because there were a couple of, I had a couple of close calls where I got really, really faint and had to like go into this, the shop at on base right across the street from the gym, luckily get a cold, like carby drink, lay down on the cold ground because I was just, I was not good. I went like super pale. Uh, so if you work out fasted, then maybe you shouldn't. And when it's super hot, um, what about you? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I'll try not to say the same exact things, but a lot of it's true. The first thing I want to do, uh, is let athletes know that, um, kind of get some mental buy-in from working out in the heat. So there is a lot of research on hyperthermic conditioning, which is conditioning at a hotter temperature. And it actually improves your fitness. It improves hypertrophy. And there's a lot of science behind that. So if you did want to dive into any of that research to try and get more mentally bought into, okay, it's okay to train in the heat, uh, just look up hyperthermic conditioning. Dr. Rhonda Patrick has some good information on that as well. I think she's got a, a short YouTube video that would, uh, point you to most of the science that you uh, would need to read on that. So it's good for you. And then like Joe was saying, like what are manage your expectations? Because um, I've talked about this before when I'm, when I was doing, when I've done Murph for a year and I'm actually going hard every single time, I, I just can't expect any sort of PR performance when I'm doing it at the hottest point in the day in, in Texas, right? Like that's just not a realistic expectation. But what's really cool about it is if you do manage your training at the level of intensity that you can, let's just say, manage, then when it cools off, there is a significant increase in your fitness. And there's research on this as well. And so there's a lot of benefit to training in the heat. And you will get fitter if you just keep moving. And so know that that's ultimately it's a good thing. Um, make sure that you hydrate. Make sure that you're getting enough electrolytes, not just water, so sodium, potassium magnesium, focusing on those things as well. Um, hydration is really important and just slowly it's like, uh, the fiber fueled guy recommends with the, you know, increasing your fiber intake. He says like go low and slow, uh, for your digestive system to kind of catch up. And it's the same with training the heat low and slow, like don't go, you know, 60, 90 minute training session. If you're not accustomed to it, you know, get, become more heat acclimated. Like my brother, uh, I've talked about him training with me and this has been more the last several months that he's been training with me, but he did kind of start towards the peak of the summer uh, with me. And while he's from Texas and has lived in Texas the majority of his life, he is not accustomed to training in the peak summer heat in my, un or at the time it was uninsulated garage. So it was just like the worst timing um, for him to start. And it was very, very hard for him, but he has grown more accustomed to it to where he's fine now. So your body will adapt and you will get better. So as long as you're, uh, you know, that it's good for you, you're taking in enough electrolytes, you're staying hydrated, uh, and know that your body will come accustomed to it slowly. Um, yeah, just manage that, those ex expectations, like Joe was saying, don't hit the intensity too hard when it's uh, hotter than you're accustomed to and just build it up, become better, better. And if you have a sauna, get in the sauna, acclimate you to, to heat even faster, just a, a pro tip there. So, or buy a sauna. That, actually, that's my official recommendation. Just there, we go go. Get, there it is. Go get a, got sauna. a weather device. Got a sauna. Uh, yeah. Don't forget your headbands when you're working out in the heat. Very important. Yeah. I'd say if we go down to more tactical level, um, <laughs> a headband, a towel, chalk, like Chalk only makes sense to a certain point, depending on how sweaty, how humid it is, yeah. because af after a certain point, it doesn't get any chalk is just stupid. It's not making sense anymore. I know that when I trained in Florida, like where Ashley lives now, it, chalk just got stupid. It's like, why am I putting this on my hands? But I did find that liquid chalk worked a little bit better than powdered chalk. If uh, you still need, if you're having some grip issues. Um, yeah. You need those uh, like QB forearm sweatbands. So that sweat doesn't drip down your arm into your hand. That's not a bad idea. I might try that. I've thought about it. If, if we were here for another summer, I'd probably invest in one because it is, if you just let your arms hang, it's just all the sweat just goes completely fills your hands. I mean, I think that investment would be like two or $3. So you might just do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I still have like a, probably a couple of weeks left of 90 plus degree weather. Yeah. 
just go ahead and get that done, Joe. Let us know. Yeah. We can you can test it. All right, so that's about it for heat. Um, yeah, we don't have a way. Like, I don't think you should try and cool off. Like, that's not necessarily what I would say for cold, but for hot, I just feel like you should get used to it and and power through because one, it's actually good for you and a lot of health and fitness benefits in just training in the heat. But yeah, I'm not sitting here saying insulate your garage, get a mini split, like all these things you could do if we wanted to spend money and make it climate controlled. Yeah. Uh, but that's not what I think that you should do when it comes to training with heat. And also like, I can't exercise. Um, it's only happened a few times, like say in the last five years where I could end up at a gym traveling or something like that. And uh, it's like, it's seriously 65 degrees in there. Like they keep it. It's not like cool. It's like cold, like much colder than I keep my house. And it takes me, if I like just get on the treadmill and start running as fast as I can, it's going to take me like 15 minutes before I even get like one bead of sweat to yeah. come out of my head. And I, I hate that. Like I can't stand that type of fitness. Um, so yeah, it's not, I just don't think it's good for you either. Like that's one of the big benefits of, of, uh, exercise is just sweating right like getting rid of a, a lot of the things that your body can get rid of or excrete through sweat and like i know some females who prefer not to sweat at all during exercise it's like the worst possible thing that you can do um, it's so much more satisfying you know i mean my runs suck now because it's so hot but like i'd still rather come back completely drenched than go for, i mean going for an awesome run is great too but it's like if i only have like a little bit of sweat then it's just it's just not as satisfying Oh, I completely agree. And I think we talked about this before, almost to like a point of trickery. Like I remember when I, I lived in Florida, like I could work out for like 15 minutes and oh, I'd yeah. be at the level of drenched to where I'm like, wow, that was an amazing workout. It's like, dude, you've worked out <laughs> for 15 minutes. <laughs> like, it's, it's no better than anything else you've done, but you did sweat a lot. No. Um, but it just, I guess I'll, 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 this last thing is if you really need to recover or lower your heart rate or uh, maybe you're doing two different kinds of training sessions and you have a, a break in between. We did find on one of our first or an older study that we did when we were looking at recovery techniques is dunking your hands and your up to your wrists in cold I, water uh, lowers your heart rate. Try I've never tried it, but we did we did cover the research on that. Definitely hit that I think up. I did once and I was like, yeah, this works great, but now I have to keep telling off my hands if I want to if I want to use them. Well, I have the cold pool in my garage and that'd be so easy to test. Yeah. Like just, just put like, your hands in real quick. Yeah. Like keep dunking them. Yeah. I might try it out. Uh, well now moving on to cold where to be honest, we have less experience, but I don't know how many, probably 200 athletes we've probably interviewed at this point who have had the cold problem. We've heard, we've asked what they've done and you know, more we picked often up than one. Not. Yeah. More often than not. It, it's actually a bit odd. I don't know. Like the Northwesterners or the um, Midwesterners and the, the, the diet Canadians. Yeah. So anyway, we'll get into to cold. Um, I unfortunately, like there is a benefit to cold, but hypothermic conditioning. So that would be the opposite of hyperthermic conditioning. I, I just, to be honest, can't find a lot of research on. I don't know if it's, there are benefits to cold, but most of the cold benefits are complete cold immersion. So like cryotherapy or getting an ice bath, uh, those types of things, some cold showers, that, that that's where most of the cold literature and research is. I don't think it works as well when you're training because your body's trying to heat up when you're cold. So you're not actually getting any benefit from the cold. So I unfortunately can't give you that mental buy-in like I did the heat and just be like, hey, it's good for <clears> you. <throat> like, just do it. But I mean, it, aside from like the mental toughness element, you can, it, it can never overlook the mental toughness element of just being able to work out like in 30 degrees with your shirt off. Right. Like that's a, that's a thing. And so maybe, maybe try it, just give it a shot. Um, but so anyway, I don't have any big picture science on the cold there for you other than cold therapy, which is not what you're doing when you're exercising and cold. So I guess we'll go straight to tactical. What do you think, Joe, what have we heard? And, and have you ever exercised in cold? I mean, tactically, I don't think it's, it's a uh, smart to work out in the cold. I just don't do it. Uh, it's just not, it's not fun. I just hate it's not my the starting. <laughs> it's, it's the starting the workout in the cold. That's completely sucks. Uh, I mean, I, I grew up in Maryland. So, and I played football in lacrosse and like lacrosse season starts at the end of February, beginning like March 1st. And there's times where the field is covered in snow. So we can't even use the field or like after a while we would run on the field and break up the snow so that it would melt. So yeah, I've definitely worked out in the cold and it's, it's miserable. Like your hands just don't really work very well afterwards. 
but garage wise or uh, gym wise, um, yeah, w- warming up is usually the hardest part for me. So I might even um, try and warm up inside. Like we're going to be moving to Monterey, and while it's not super cold there, it's still like 40s and 50s year round at night. So it never even gets hot there. So almost almost the opposite of here, but just not quite as um, not to, to the to the extreme. I will probably think about keeping my stationary bike indoors and everything else out in the garage. Cause even if the garage will only be like in the fifties, it's still just like, I'll, I'll warm up inside while I'm still warm and then just go out while I'm already warm. And again, it's not, it's not even all that cold, but if you are in a climate, like that is very, very cold, you know, thirties, twenties or less, if you can warm up kind of inside before going outside, cause when you're, you're hanging out around the house, probably even when in sweats, you're probably comfortable and you step outside and you're cold and you just don't want to touch anything maybe do a little bit of warm up inside. And then just after a little bit warm, a little stretching, a little something, um, move that fl- flow that right in, into the outside of the gym. And then you're kind of a little bit more ready to go. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot for cold tips just cause I haven't really done as much in the cold. Um, hands definitely take care of your hands. Maybe if you can wear some sort of gloves because that can be a very uncomfortable thing and then like after your hands you get a certain amount of cold it's really hard to grip so even between sets and reps try and have something to keep your hands warm whether it's like a hoodie pocket um something yeah um i don't have a lot of experience with cold other than when it gets cold in texas uh, which it does occasionally like last year i got a week of single degree digits with that crazy storm that came through and that was that was cool i got to experience what it's like to be like a i don't know like a minnesota garage gym athlete or something you know south dakota north dakota you know where it's actually cold um it doesn't it's not truly cold in a lot of these northeastern spot, spots unless you're like i don't know northern new york or something like that uh and i have done some training in new york my in-laws live there closer to new york city and it's been like snowy outside and i've gone for runs um and the thing i've learned no matter what temperature i think the lowest temperature i probably actually exercise in is like five now or something five degrees it's like you warm up that's the takeaway like if you have like a hoodie on and a beanie and like some some pants uh you will warm up and i'm sure any garage gym athlete will tell you that so you kind of just have to deal with that um the tips that we have we've gotten from over the years is uh like move your barbell inside right? That's a big one. Like they, people have said they will move their barbell, uh, into their house and then bring it out to the garage when it's time to train. I think that's a great idea because like Joe was saying, when you're cold, when your hands get to a certain level of cold, it's just kind of like, as they're not even like functioning as well as they should anymore, you know? So you have to keep them warm. And, and if you're constantly touching a cold barbell, that's not going to help things. So if the barbell is at your room temperature of your house, that's going to be huge. Like Joe said, keeping your hands, um, warm, uh, throughout one idea I had, and I'd love to run this by some of our, uh, cold weather athletes is like baseball gloves. Cause they seem to be like, they're not as sticky as like a wide receiver glove and they have more than enough tactile feedback for you to like still be able to use, but not a lot of warmth. It's, they're not there to keep your hands warm, but it might be just enough to where you could still function without losing that feel you need, like on the barbell or a different, uh, apparatus in the garage. And so baseball gloves, something I thought of another thing I thought of was like a space heater on an outlet timer. Um, so if you hook up, um, like some sort of space heater, whether uh, I guess it'd be an electric space heater, um, that is basically if it's plugged in, it's on. And so if you have an outlet timer that you can put on a schedule to where it kicks on like an hour or two hours, depending on your space size before you enter the gym, if you train in the morning or whenever that might be able to heat, heat it up more than enough, uh, to be able to, to execute that. Uh, and then that was about it other than wearing the appropriate gear, which we've kind of sprinkled in as, as we're saying is just making sure that you're not, you know, being stupid, you know, like, I guess you could go do t-shirts and a short shorts if you want to, like I said, if you want to work on that mental toughness element, but I'd reserve that for maybe like once a month, just test who you are, how you deal with it. But, uh, ultimately you're just got to deal with the cold. And I think that's about everything we have. I don't, I don't know. Insulating your space is a big deal. I think if, uh, if you can afford the insulation, even if, if it's a DIY job, you know, putting in some insulation in your garage, um, it's, 
it, I know I have a spray foam insulation in my garage now, and it's probably going to be actually kind of toasty in the, just from what I'm seeing now, we, we've had it drop into the forties a couple of times and it's um, still pretty warm in there. So I think insulation can go a long way too. That's nice though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to know anything about cold anymore. Um, <laughs> even when it gets cold, it'll be probably uh, bearable in there. Uh, oh, anything else, Joe? Bath. No. And then if it's raining outside, if we're just talking about weather in general, I wonder if we're going to go there. Yeah. Just go outside and run in the rain, like do it. If there's no lightning, just go try it out. It's actually really fun to run in the rain. Uh, you don't get to do that often. I, I enjoy it whenever I do get the opportunity. And I do think embracing the elements, whether it's at a Spartan race or occasionally on the weekend, I mean, that's part of that meet yourself element. I love to talk about um, just putting yourself in these uncomfortable situations. I know I've been in some just super memorable Murph workouts where the mile runs were in like super windy, cold, hard rain. And I, there's, I didn't run inside. I was just like, no way. I'm, this is an opportunity. Cause I don't get that opportunity a lot in Texas. Uh, because if it's raining here, it's typically some really nasty other stuff going on. Like uh, a lot of lightning, thunderstorms, hail, something like that. So I would have to stay inside. But when I do have that opportunity, when it's just a nice rain, I'm, I'm definitely going to embrace it. It's definitely a miserable start in the rain, but once you're wet, um, it's not too bad. That's one thing a Spartan race will teach you too. You're like, and if you haven't learned this, if you like weren't in the military or something, you'll learn very fast. Like, Oh, but what happened when my shoes get wet? It's like nothing. They you're, they're now wet and you'll just be wet and you can still run with wet feet. Uh, you just don't want to do it for like 15 hours. You know, you want to be able to switch those things out, but yeah, yeah. I'd recommend wearing your trail shoes. If you have trail shoes, if you're going to run in the, the rain, just for some extra traction. Yeah. I think that's about it weather wise. And our yeah. first edition of, uh, garage gripes or the garage gym problem solver crusher episodes. We'll, we'll longer, see. We yeah. We'll just longer. see. <laughs> I think the listeners are going to lean towards uh, mine, but we'll, we'll take a vote. We'll see. Uh, but that's it. If you guys do have any, um, cause it's not an AMA, but if you do have any problems you'd like us to cover, we're also going to be covering some of these on the YouTube channel when it's appropriate. This didn't feel like an appropriate YouTube video. Um, tutorial even though this is on youtube just our, our smiling faces but if uh, i i can hop into actually showing people something we're definitely gonna do some youtube videos around these problems that people have submitted so if you have any problems let us know in the facebook group or shoot us an email um support at garage and we will uh cover it because uh, we're gonna cover a lot of these but that's it for this one guys thanks for watching or listening